you what's up YouTube, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a brick house. It's going to be very straightforward, it's not completely dissimilar to the brick house 1 tutorial that I made not so long ago, except ever so slightly bigger. If you want to make it, here's what you're going to need. You will need stone bricks, regular bricks, you'll need some regular stone, you'll also need some stone brick stairs, and some sort of glass. I'm going to be using glass pane, however the choice is yours. Bring on the pane. You will also need some iron bars, and finally you will need a door. Oh, I suppose depending on what door you choose, you may also need a button as well. I always forget. I don't really have use for them. Once you have all of those materials, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'm going to be making it right here. You're going to want to kick this off with a row of six stone bricks coming directly up from the floor. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. What you then want to do, once you have your vertical row of six, is from the sixth block, go to the right of it by nine. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And connect that ninth block to the ground like so, to give you a little archway. What you then want to do, once you've connected it to the ground, is come back up to this ninth block and continue going right of this block by a further nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then connect that ninth block to the ground to give you two archways. What you then want to do, once you form the second archway, is come back up to this ninth block, and you might even guess what I'm going to say, from this block, go to the right by a further nine stone bricks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and connect that ninth block, just as you've done two other times, to the ground, to give you something which should look a little bit like this. So what you want to have now are three archways of equal size, and this is going to be the front of our house. For those of you guys that like to know that information, this is the front, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to mark it with a bed as things can get slightly confusing with houses like this. Let me just throw that away. So, once you've reached this point right here, it's now time for us to make the frame for the entire ground floor. So come to the back of your archways, and this is what you want to do. Where the vertical rows intersect with our long horizontal row, so this point, and this point, and the two other points, from these blocks right here, the connection points, you want to drag each of these blocks back towards the theoretical back of our house, each by nine blocks of stone bricks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And finally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. To give you something which should look like that. I made it sound really difficult, but in actuality, it's actually very simple. So you just want those four rows of nine. What you then want to do is connect each one of those four rows to the ground by the ninth block to give you something which should, once you've finished it, look very similar to what we have on the front of our house. So you just want to connect them to the ground and then connect them together, top block to top block, like this. So going all along the row, you want to have something which should look like this. Very simple. Once you've done that the once, you want to do it one more time. So from now, each of these connecting points of these archways, so this one and the other three, you want to drag these blocks right here back by a further nine. And this is the last time that we have to do this for the ground floor. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And for the fourth and final time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You then want to do the exact same thing 
that you did only moments ago. You want to connect the knife blocks both to the floor and together, so you want to end up with something. I wonder how long I can drag this out. That should look a little bit like this, and that is the framework for the entire ground floor. It's very simple, you should just have six little plots right there, evenly spaced, all the same size. So once you finish doing that, it's now time for us to work on the second floor of our house. So starting from the back left hand corner of our house, so from this block right here, you want to raise this block up by six with your stone bricks. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And as a matter of fact, I've just thought of an easy way to do this. On the back of the house where we have all of these connection points again, we have three more. You just want to raise up every single point, each by six. So it wants to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're going to want to have something which should look like this. It makes a lot more sense when you actually see it. Once you have those four rows of six stone bricks, you just want to connect them all together, top block to top block. You should be pretty familiar with that by now. So, like this. I don't know where I'm going. I, I thought there was another one. I was wrong. I was going to go all the way over to the end of the world. So, what you should have is something like this. Our three archways again. That's what this whole house is centered around. What you then want to do, once you have your three archways, and you should be quite familiar with this, we've done it two times on the ground floor, is from the four connection points between the vertical rows and the horizontal row of the archway, you want to do four rows of nine stone bricks coming towards the front of the house. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What you then want to do, once you have your four rows of nine stone bricks, is of course connect them to the ground floor framework and then connect them together. So, just going to individually do each one of these. That's connected to the ground floor now. All I have to do is connect them together. So you want to end up with something that should look a little bit like this. So once you've done this the once, you're going to want to do a very similar thing just one more time. So again, from each of these intersecting points, you just want to drag them forward towards the front of the house, each by nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And finally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You then want to, of course, connect each of those nine blocks to the ground floor. Three and four. However, this time you don't want to connect all of them together. You just want to connect the two outer boxes together. So you want to have something which should look like this. You just want to connect the two outer boxes together, leaving this middle box, this little middle section, you don't want to have anything there. And in completing that, you have successfully finished the second floor framework. And as a matter of fact, you finished the whole house's framework. Once you've reached this point right here, and as always, pause this if necessary, if you're still working on any of that, of course, it's now time for us to move on. So we're actually just going to do something which is going to make the next part a little easier. What we're going to do is fill in the second floor with our carpet of choice. And we're also going to fill in the balcony as well. So I'm going to grab 
some dark grey wool. That's what I want to use for the second floor carpet. You can of course use whatever colour you want and of course I'm going to need some bricks for the balcony. So this is where the balcony is going to be. I'm just going to do a couple of rows just to signify where it is. So this is where the balcony is going to be. It's going to be nice and open, that's why we don't have this row of stone bricks here. I'm going to go away and fill this in with the regular bricks, and I'm also going to fill in the entire second floor, all of these little sections, in with dark grey wool. And as I mentioned, use whatever colour you want to use. This isn't 100% necessary to progress, it's just going to make the next few bits a little easier with block placement and such. So I'm going to be back once I've filled all of these little sections in. So I have just finished filling each of the second floor sections in with their respective material. And the reason that I wanted to do that is because it makes this next part a little bit easier. We're going to be placing some bricks. So next thing on our agenda is to fill each of these little panels in with bricks and you want to do it like this. So you want to layer the bricks one row behind the actual structure of the house, like the actual framework of the house like this. So just to give you guys a little bit of an example, it just wants to look like this and you just want to have it so that each of these little panels are filled in. However, it gets a little tricky with the middle section. So I'm just going to build up the bricks a little bit just to show you how this little middle section is going to play out. So for the second floor, you're just going to want to have the brick formed like this. You want to leave this front bit completely exposed and you want to do the exact same thing for the ground floor section as well. So you just want to have this front panel completely exposed and you want to fill all of the other panels in surrounding the front panel in with bricks like this. But that is the only difficult part of the house to fill in with bricks. And by difficult, I mean it's the only different part of the house where you actually have to be wary what you're doing. All you want to do after you've done that little middle part is go all the way around the house, and I do mean all the way around, and just fill every single panel in with bricks. And they just want to, as I've mentioned a few times already, they just want to sit one block behind the actual framework of the house, the actual stone bricks. So I'm going to go away and do this. It's going to take quite a while to do. I'll be back once I'm finished. So I have just finished adding all of the bricks into the empty panels around the house. I'm not giving you guys a nice slow rotational view today, I'm giving you guys a quick view. There's not really too much to see and of course I don't want to add about 50 minutes onto the video and as you can see the only two panels that differ are the two front middle panels but I already showed you guys what to do there so once you have reached this point right here and as always pause this if necessary of course we're now going to work on the hmm I suppose you could call this a porch. I called it a courtyard in my last video, but that's just not right. So I'm going to refer to this little under section where the entrance is going to be as a porch, and we're going to do some work on the balcony as well. So starting with the porch, I'm going to grab a little bit of light, illuminate it a little bit so we can actually see what we're doing. My old eyesight isn't what it used to be. Throw those away. So I'm just going to make the entrance of the house for you, I'm not going to uh, try and describe it or anything, that would end poorly, trust me on that one, I don't have the necessary descriptive powers to tell you what I'm doing here, so you're going to want to have something which should look a little bit like this for the entrance. Of course, you can mold it to what you want the actual entrance to look like, but this is what I came up with, it's pretty standard. But there you have it. Pause this if necessary, of course. Um, the only thing, of course, that's missing are the doors, which I placed incorrectly, well done me. But the only reason that I left those off is because I want to be able to enter and leave the house at will later on without having to mess around with buttons, since I am, of course, using mechanical doors. Once you've done the entrance, next thing on the agenda, I suppose we will mess about with the windows. So the windows for the porch 
look exactly like this, and they look the same on both sides. So, imagine them filled in with glass pane. They want to be shaped exactly like this, and I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side as well. So, I figure I'd, uh, I'd do everything that there is to do with the balcony and the porch so that we can just mass build everything else. So, there you have it. That is the other side window in the porch. Very simple. Again, it's going to be filled in with glass pane a little later on. Pause this if necessary, of course. What you then want to do is, and I'm not going to be doing this on recording, but I'm going to start it off a little bit. What you then want to do is knock out all of the original grass block, or dirt block, I should say, flooring for the porch, and you want to replace it with regular stone, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing, and unfortunately it takes a little bit too long to show it, so I'm going to be back in just a moment once I've replaced the floor for the porch. So I have just finished ripping up and filling in the original floor for the porch, and in doing that, I have pretty much completed the porch in its entirety. Of course, we have to ha add some doors on here, and we have to add some glass pane in here and there, but it is pretty much done. Pause this if necessary, of course. Once you've finished doing all of that, it's now time for us to turn our attentions on to the balcony. So, come up to the balcony, and first of all, we're going to mess about with the entrances. There are two of them. The entrance isn't, as you might imagine, from this middle panel, the entrances come from these two side panels, so you want to do this. The entrances are shaped the exact same way as the downstairs entrances, the main entrance, so you're just going to want to go ahead and copy exactly what you should have already done just slightly below us, so you just want to have something which should look a little bit like that. And, of course, you're going to want to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the opposite side here. So, I'm just going to quickly do this. Knock out these six blocks. Throw some stone brick stairs in here. Oh, I, I forgot to place the stone bricks. There we, there we go. And there you have it. Of course... Just like with the ground floor, we're missing the iron doors, but I'll add those in a little bit later. Next thing, time to mess with this panel a little bit. So, we're just going to add in the window. This window differs from most other windows, so I'm just going to highlight this. I apologise, that was my phone that you may have heard. There you go, that is the window. That is going to, later on, be filled in with glass pane. Very easy. Pause this if necessary, of course. Last thing that we have to do for the balcony is this. So, for the front of the balcony, we don't want anybody falling off, so we're going to add a little bit of railing, but you just want to add an extra stone bricks onto the left and right-hand side of the middle of the balcony like that, and then you just want to connect some iron bars from the left brick to the right brick to give you something which should look exactly like this. Very simple indeed. Pause this if necessary, of course. Once you've finished doing both of those things, once you've finished with the porch and the balcony, it's time for us to do a couple of the unique windows. And I, I had air quotes when I said unique windows. It's pretty much just copying this window that we've done right here. So, coming towards the back of the house now, what you basically want to do with these two middle panels that we have on the back of the house is just copy the window that we made for the middle panel of the balcony. So you just want to copy the kind of like a, the plus shape that we have on the front of the house. So you just want to have something which should look, once you've finished it, a little bit like this. Pause this if necessary, of course. I'm going to cut out. It's getting a little bit dark. When I get back, I'm going to show you what you want to do for the rest of the windows of the house. So I thought that I'd show you what we've just completed again in the daylight, now that we can actually see. And as you can see, it's just a direct copy of that middle panel of the balcony. 
Once you've done that, and as always, pause this if necessary, of course, I'm going to show you what you want to do for every single other window of the house. So coming to the front of the house, I always like to start with the front, I don't know why. This is what you want to do for every front and back window of the house. You want to have something, whoops, you want to have something which should look, after I've filled it in with glass pane, a little bit like this. Let me just finish filling that in. So this is what every single front and back window of the house wants to look like. It's a very simple design. Tweak it if you like. This is what I designed it to be. And by every single front and back, I mean every single front and back. So these three here and the four that remain on the back as well. So take note of that window. And that's what you want to have there. For the side windows, so the windows on the side of the house, they want to look the exact same as these two windows that we have here in the porch. So they want to look like this. I'm just going to fill them in with paint. I'm not going to make a new window for you. So every single window that exists on the left and right hand side... I can't even speak. Every single window that... what. <laughs> Every single window that exists on the Every single window that exists on the left and the right hand side of the house wants to look exactly like this one right here. I'm going to go around the entire house and I'm going to carve out every single window and I'm also going to fill them in with glass pane as well and as a matter of fact whilst I'm at it I'm going to fill the existing windows that I've already knocked out in with glass pane so like this middle one and the ones on the back and these side ones here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll be back once I've finished. It is going to take quite a while. So I have just finished doing all of the windows that exist around the house. It was a real pain. There's a pun in there. It took a really long time. I really do hate working with glass pane. I wish glass block looked half as good. As you can see, the windows on the back of the house are the exact same windows on the front of the house, barring the two middle sections, of course. The side windows of the house are the exact same as the two side windows in the porch that I showed you. It's really simple to do, it just, it just takes an absorbent amount of time. So, if you're still working on that, and I'm 100% positive you are, there's no way that you've finished that yet. Pause this if necessary, of course. Once you have finished doing it, it's time to do the last irritating part of the house, or at least the last irritating part of the house for me. So this is what you want to do, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview of it whilst I explain it. So you're going to want to go ahead and go all the way around the house in each individual panel and just add those four stone brick stairs into every single panel. And when I say every single panel, I mean every single panel. So I'm just going to give you a nice little demo with the porch here. This is going surprisingly well. This never goes this well. I'm, I'm placing them perfectly. Well done me. So there you go. This is pretty much what you want to do all the way around the house. In every single one of these panels, I don't know how many there are, you want to place these individual four stone brick stairs. It's going to take quite a while, which is why I'm going to cut out to do it. I'm going to be back once I have added four stone brick stairs into every single panel that exists around the house. Back in a moment. It's going to take a long time. So I have just finished zipping all the way around the house, adding all of the stone brick stairs into the individual panels. It really didn't take as long as I thought it would. No way near as much time as the glass pane. Ugh, the glass pane. And in my opinion, it dramatically improves the aesthetics of the house. I really like how it looks. That's why I chose to emulate my Brick House 1 when making this. I, I just really like the look of it. If you haven't seen my Brick House 1, I made it very recently. You can find it in my house tutorials playlist or maybe in just my recent videos. If you've not seen it, looks very similar to this house except it's a little bit smaller. So, once you've finished adding all of your stone brick stairs in, and as always, pause this if necessary if you're still working on that, 
it's time for us to do the last thing that we need to do to the exterior, which is the roof. So, first things first, to place the roof, we're going to first have to add an extra layer on top of the second floor framework. So what you want to do, and what I've already started doing as you can see, is you just want to trace along the top of the outside of the second floor framework, as I'm doing right now. It should end up looking like a C shape, or a U shape, or an N shape. I suppose it really does depend what view you're looking at it from, but it should end up looking a little bit like the... whoops like this once you've finished it, so, I mean, I suppose I could have used a different material so it would pop a little better, but hopefully you guys can see what I've done. I've just traced along the outside shape of the second floor framework. And the reason that I've done that is ju it just makes it a little easier to do what we're going to do next. So, once you've just traced along the outside, what you then want to do is just take out your stone brick stairs, and you just want to then trace along the outside of the stone bricks stone bricks that you've done. I almost said trace along the outside of your stone brick stairs, which would be impossible because we haven't placed any, but this is what you want to do. It's fairly obvious what I'm doing, so you just want to go all along the outside of your stone bricks, as I'm doing right now, and once you've finished, it should look a little bit stalling. Still stalling. It should look a little bit like this. Nothing too complicated about it whatsoever, and the top view probably gives it a little bit more justice. It wants to look exactly like this. The roof is not difficult in any way, shape, or form. And once you've done that first layer of stone brick stairs, you're going to want to go ahead and do three more separate layers. So each one of the layers is one block higher and one block inward in relation to the previous layer. So this second layer that we have here, as I said, one block higher, one block inwards. And in this case, it can just sit on top of the stone bricks that we have. And once we finish the second layer, we then want to have two more layers. So just going right round, right round. And Actually, this is going to take quite a long time, so I think I might actually cut this out, but um, as you can see, layer number three is just going to do the exact same thing as will layer number four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out, and I'm going to, after I've finished this layer, do one more final layer to give us four layers in total, and then I'm just going to fill the top of the roof in with stone bricks. It's very simple. I'll be back once I've done the roof in its entirety. So I have just finished doing the roof as described. We have the four layers of stone brick stairs, one, two, three, four, and then we just have this top section filled in with stone bricks. Very easy to do indeed. Roofs don't get too much easier than that. Unless, of course, you have a flat roof, which the majority of my builds do for that very reason. Hate doing roofs. Once you've finished doing that, and as always, pause this if necessary if you're still working on any of that, of course, the only thing that we have left to do for the house now is the interior, if you actually want to do it. So, first of all, I'm just going to give you guys a nice 360 degree view of the exterior of the house, a nice slow one, and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do with the interior, and it's not going to be very much to be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not going to mess about with it, I, you guys know how I feel about interiors, I, I, I just hate them. So, it's actually a really, really simple design this house, I don't know why I like it so much, as I said, emulated from brick house number one, I just, I just like it, it seems to go together. I don't know why. I Every time I build a brick house, it always ends up like this. I, I try to go a little crazy with them, but they they always end up exactly like this. I don't know, I must just have an affinity for building them like a, like big and chunky, like manner-ish. I don't know. But that is what the entire exterior wants to look like. We're completely finished with that. Let's move on to the interior. So, 
the only things that I'm going to be doing, since we're pretty much halfway there with the second floor, the only things that I'm going to be doing is knocking out this ground floor. I'm going to be ripping it up and replacing it with carpet in the form of dark grey wool. I'm going to have to grab that back out. And I'm also just going to add in a couple of staircases, or just maybe one staircase. I haven't decided yet, and um, that's pretty much going to be it. I, I may also tinker with the, the roof a little bit, the inside of the roof, not the outside of the roof. Um, it depends how it looks when I get up there, but um, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I'm obviously not going to do it on recording because it's going to take quite a while. I will be back once I've finished, as I said, ripping up the floor, replacing it, adding in some staircases, and depending, maybe the actual inside of the roof as well. Back in a moment. So I have just finished doing the interior. It's not very impressive, but let's take a look anyway, shall we? So coming into the house, the first thing you'll notice is I have ripped up the original floor and replaced it with my dark grey wool. I always prefer a darker colour for the floors of the house. As you look outwards to in, I, I don't know why, it just makes it look a little better, it looks a little bit more looming. I, I don't know why. If you put a lighter carpet in here, I, it just doesn't look right, or at least to me. My weekly service announcement, as usual, is remember to replace underneath glass pane blocks. All glass blocks, or really any block that you can see underneath of in general, like doors and what have you. I don't know why, but it drives me crazy when you've seen that somebody's replaced the floor of the house and they've forgotten to do underneath the glass pane. I don't know why. G call it OCD, call it whatever you want. It just drives me insane. So that's the weekly service announcement. Um, as you can see, I've also done a couple of staircases. Um, nothing too impressive about them whatsoever. It's just some stone stairs with some upside down stairs backing and some dark grey wall next to them. Very simple to do. Um, didn't want to make it too extravagant. Uh, I have two staircases. It, it seemed to fit like one staircase for each wing. Um, and that's pretty much the ground floor. That's the ground floor. That's all I've had to do there. Uh, the second floor I had to do a little more. Um, I added some iron bars around the top of the staircase. Don't want to fall down there. It's all about safety. Did the same to the other side as well. I did decide to mess about with the interior for the roof as well. I, I decided I didn't like it, so I was just going to block it up with dark grey wool. I, I probably shouldn't have used dark grey wool, I probably should have used stone or something, but I suppose if you wanted to, the dark grey wool works, because if you wanted an attic, then, you know, you've already got the carpet down. Um, it also served another purpose. The uh, layer of dark grey that I used, that goes all around the outside, um, it also gave the uh, glass pane something to stick to, so I suppose, you know, kind of works. So, there you go, that's what I've done with the second floor. Nothing interesting whatsoever, I, d I just wanted you guys to see it, so... Um, I'll, the furnishing, I will leave up to you, but um, at least you know where the staircases should go. I always plan that there should be two, I d it just seems to make sense, and of course you know what it looks like once it's all done up like that. You could go for a, an extra like attic for the top if you want, and of course you can do all your furnishings, there's plenty of room in that house. You could even section off the individual rooms, I mean, it, it, it makes sense, all you have to do is just kind of line it up with the actual framework of the house. Um, it's very simple and, well, all of that being said, all of that being shown, the tutorial at this point is 100% officially over. There is nothing left for me to show you. There is nothing left for me to add. All I can say at this point is I hope that you had an easy enough time following it. I tried to keep it as simple as possible. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.